take care of us. But in John chapter 16, Jesus starts warning the disciples of what's to come. And I love John 16, 32 through 33. It says, Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour cometh. Yea, it is now come that ye shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. Listen to verse 33. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. I... We were singing the song, It Is Well With Our Soul. And I don't know if you actually know the background of that song. The background of that song was a gentleman wrote that. They just lost his wife and his children. They were going overseas and they were in a boat and the boat actually sunk. And he began to pray and he began to ask God, why? Why me? Why wasn't I on the boat? Why didn't I, my, my family was here? And God began to put it on him and say, listen, you have me. And he began to write, It Is Well With My Soul. It is well with my soul. And I, I noticed this morning as we sung that, I almost want to jump up here and let you know, church, I know there's things going on all over the world. We see what happened in Paris. We see what happened in uh, uh, all these other countries. And, and, and church, I know that tribulation is near, but praise be to God. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. Church, if we ever need God, we need Him more now than we ever have before. We need to give back. Listen, church, I feel like even during this busy time as we go into the holidays of Thanksgiving and the holidays of Christmas and, and we get so bundled up and, and we get so uh, frantic with everything that's going on, uh, going on. Church, I really believe we need peace. And the only way we can get that peace is letting, allowing God to come into our heart. I love it. He don't just tell us just about peace. I love the next part. In the world, you may have tribulations, but be of good cheer. Be of good cheer. How can I be in good cheer when we're seeing people that just went to a concert or to a restaurant? Or if you look all around the world where people went to a funeral and, and, and people are, are being shot, people are being killed because people believe in evil thoughts and different things. How can we be in good cheer? And here's how we can be of good cheer. Because our God didn't just come and leave. He came and he overcame. And he said, when I leave, I'll send down something with you. I'll send down a comforter to let you know if I overcome this world, you can overcome this world. Nothing can hold you back. Listen, we can be happy in times of trials, in times of tribulations, because now we have a peace from God, a peace that lasts, a peace that stays as long as we allow God into our hearts. Somebody asked me the other day, listen, they said, with everything going on, how can we be sure that there's a God? And I told them, listen, if I'm more sure now than I've ever been, because God is still alive, He's still real. I see miracles every day. That was a miracle. Listen, somebody said that the reason why they wasn't in the, in the Paris concert was because for some reason they were five minutes late. And you know what? Some of us look at that and say, well, what's going on? That's a miracle in the making right there. Some of you what couldn't be here or, or shouldn't be here this morning, but God has put a miracle in your life. Some of you have sicknesses that you don't know how they got healed, but God has done a miracle in your life. Be of good cheer, church, because I, God, has overcame the world, and He has made us more than conquerors. He's made us to realize if we have Him in our heart, greater things are still to come. Amen. Greater things are still to come. I know we've been praying for Paris, but we need to pray for all over the world. Amen. We need to pray for the United States. Amen. Well, you said we didn't have a tragedy yet. You know what the biggest tragedy of all? There's people that are outside of these doors that don't know who Jesus Christ is. Amen. We got something that we got to do, church. It doesn't matter how old you are or how young you are. Church, there are people that are dying lost. And if we don't tell them now, who's going to tell them? Who's going to tell them? First, we've got to realize what's inside of us. This morning, real quickly, <coughs> pray for me as I go through this sickness. Galatians.
Galatians 6, 7 through 10. It says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, thou shalt he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due seasons we shall reap, if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. Church, we've been talking about life decisions, decisions that you make in your life. We've been looking at the seven laws of the harvest. And I'm not going to go through them this morning, but we all know them. We've already went through five of them. And this morning, we're going to look at the sixth law. And that is we reap the full harvest of the good only if we preserve. Listen, church, I want to let you know, yes, God will provide the increase. We've got to put some work into it. Last week we said, whatever effort we put into it is what will grow out of it. But you know what this means? After you, after you plant, guess what? you got to do some work also. Listen, it doesn't stop after you get saved. you got to continue to allow the seed to go inside of you and continue to allow it to grow in our lives. Galatians 6, 9 through 10 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due seasons we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are in the household of faith. Paul warns us to not be weary or do not lose heart. Paul knows that reaping is relating to the sowing, not only in the matter of the quality of the seed, but also in regard to the quantity sown, which we talked about last week. But church, it don't end there after we sow. We can't be lazy. Amen. You know, I, I come to realize sometimes Christians get lazy. We, we want everybody else to do the work that we should be doing. Amen. We complain about the government, but when's the last time we actually stood up and prayed? Amen. We complain about the ones that are homeless, the ones that don't have anything. Well, when's the last time we gave? Amen. We complain about these young people. They don't know what they're doing. They all upset. Listen, I get mad too, man. I was I was in the store the other day and I was looking at something. Now I feel like an old man. I was looking at the store the other day and this young person cut me off. You know what I did? I was like, man, that young people, they just don't have no respect. <laughs> Come to find out, they was only about 10 years younger than I was. <laughs> When's the last time we actually were the example? how they're supposed to live. Listen, church, as Christians, we can't become lazy just because the seed's already been planted. There's still some work we got to do because the seed that's planted needs some work. It needs some things. And as we like to say right around here, we can't stop and we won't stop. We got to keep moving. We got to keep working. Listen, church, just because you're saved doesn't mean that you can stop trying to get closer to God. A couple of years, I think a year ago, we had a whole series on our quest for holiness. And our quest for holiness was to be more like Jesus, to be more like Him, to become whole, to become more holy. And you know what, church? I come to realize, holiness doesn't come in a day. It comes in a constant walk, a constant movement. But how do we preserve this harvest? The first thing we must do after the seed is sown in our life, we must look at the three basic principal conditions that allow the seed to develop. These conditions are light, water, and soul. You see, church, the seed does not grow if you don't allow these three things come to your seed. So you have to put in the work to allow your seed to develop. The first one is the soul. Do you know what? If you just plant a seed, if you don't have the right soul, it'll die. Amen. Try to plant a seed on some hard dirt. See what happens. I mean, I'm not a farmer and I know that. Amen. Amen. It won't grow. Try to plant your seed in sand. It won't grow because it don't have the right things. You see, the soil will determine the health and the strength of the plant. The better the soil, the healthier and the stronger the plant. Farmers will tell you the soil must not be too sandy or too hard, and it must supply the right nutrients for the plants to grow salt and go strong. The reason why this is, is because plants must have a good foundation. Amen. Must have a good foundation. Because the soil nutrients 
provide the proper building blocks for the plant to build it. Jesus tells us this in Matthew 7, 25 through 27. He said, And the rains descends, and the floods came, and the wind blew and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. Church, are you allowing your heart to be the right soul for the seed to grow? What do I mean? I mean, are you being Jesus-centered and spirit-led? Amen. Listen, I come to realize when we start putting opinions in things, that's when things go wrong. Because my opinions are different than your opinions, but I know this word is the truth. Amen. Amen. Listen, we can argue all day who's the best team in college football. We actually did that before church. People were getting upset. Clemson looked bad yesterday. Ohio State needs to be there. We don't even want to talk about Alabama. You know, all this other stuff. And, and all this crazy things. And we were talking about this and that. You know what? That's a based on opinion. Not on a fact. That's based on an opinion. And you know what's so bad about that church? We come to church and we base things on opinion instead of basing things on the fact. That's right. That's right. You want to know the reason why we got too many churches? It's because we base things on opinions. My, my religion professor told me one time, and I thought this was really funny. There was a church, it was the First Baptist Church. First Baptist Church. And this was back in the 1800s. And, and the preacher, he would come up and preach, and at that time they didn't have a coat hanger. And, and so he would have to put his coat down on the ground. Well, he got tired of cleaning his coat. So you know what he did? He, got, he went out and he found a peg. And he nailed the peg into the wall right behind the pulpit. He nailed it there and he, and he put his coat on there. Harmless, right? Well, you know what? Half the church split. Because he put a peg in the wall. They said that was a holy wall. <laughs> so you know what they did? They left the church. You know what they did? They went about a mile down the road. And when they went a mile down the road, they started their own church. And you know what the name of that church was? The First Baptist No Peg Church. <laughs> When opinion gets in the way, it's when we begin to fall. That's right. Because we don't, we're not built on the right foundation. We're built on our personal conflict instead of what the Word has called us to be. Amen. Church, we got to have the right soul. And after we have the right soul, guess what we got to do after that? Then we got to have the right sunlight. You see, sunlight changes in length and intensity throughout the year. And it is the plant's signal to start developing at the right time. But that's not all it does. You see, it also helps show the plant which way to go. Have you ever put a plant near a window and it bent to the sunlight? You see, the sun shows which way the plant should grow. Church, what is your sun? Because I'm letting you know, if you serve the world, you'll start going towards the world. But if you serve the Son, the true Son, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, guess what? You'll go towards Him. How do we do that? Well, Psalms 119 and 105 says, The Word is the lamp upon my, to my feet and the light unto my path. You see, church, God, His Word shows us which way to go. And if we're ever going to grow the right way, we must put it, it work and get into his word. Jeremiah 10 and 23 says, Oh Lord, I know what the way of it is, is not in himself. It is not in man and walking to direct his steps. Jeremiah wrote that we can try to walk on our own, but if we do, we'll walk in darkness of this world and we'll be ignorant to the only way that produces truth, which is Jesus Christ. After we Find the right soil until we find the right light. Then we need the water. Amen. You know, that's cool because some seed, it takes a lot of water for them to plant. Some of them don't. Usually I get the ones that don't and then I flood it. And then the seed dies. But you know what? Some seeds have to have this amount of water and some seeds have to have that amount of water. As so I got to thinking about it, you know what? If you look in the Bible, a lot of times water is associated with the Holy Spirit. 
Church, our seed will never grow the right way if we don't have the Holy Spirit inside of us. It is well with my soul. It can't be well with your soul if you don't have the Holy Spirit inside of it. When trials and tribulations come, what guides you? The Holy Spirit guides you. When things come your way, temptations come your way, what guides you away from those temptations? The Holy Spirit guides you. What saves you? Not Bobby. Amen. If you wait for me to save you, we in trouble. But through the Holy Spirit drawing you to Him saves you. Brother Jesse, I think we try to rule out the Holy Spirit so much that we put too much, we don't put enough water into the seed and the seed never grows. We give it sunlight. We throw the word at it all the time. We try to build a good foundation, but I don't let you know, without enough water, the foundation will get hard. And when it gets hard, it begins to crack. And when it begins to crack, there's nothing that will grow out of cracked foundation. But when you put the Holy Spirit with the right amount of sun, with the right foundation, guess what, church? The seed begins to grow, and greater things begin to happen. And God says He will provide the increase as long as we put the work in with it. And church, when we continue to put the work in with it, He will provide something greater than we ever thought. Fruit that will bear. Fruit that will last. Not bad fruit but good fruit. Fruit that will make sure that people see who Jesus Christ is and who, Lord, who the Lord is. Church, and we need the Holy Spirit. Young people, I want to let you know this. If you ever go to a church or any other pastor gets up here and says, they can save you or you can do this to be saved. You need to look at it and say, no, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Spirit of God. We need the presence of God. And every time we come into the building, every time we pray, we ask for the Holy Spirit to guide us, to show us where to go. Because without it, nothing grows. Right. Nothing grows. Church, we need more of the Holy Spirit. We need the right water. 1 Corinthians 12 and 13 says, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bound or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. John 4 and 14, it says, But whosoever drinketh the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give them shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. It comes from the Spirit. But you see, after we do the right that stuff, I come to find this. And I thank God for some of you in this, because you're showing me this every single day. Even the right garden has weeds that come up. Even the right sun, even the right water, even the right foundation has weeds that come up. And you know what happens when weeds come up? If we don't get rid of the weeds, guess what happens? suffocates the plant, the plant dies. Church, I want to let you know, you can't control the weeds, but you can control where the weeds go. What I mean is when the weeds grow up, if you don't get down and pick them, guess what's going to happen? It's going to die. Church, there's some of us in our lives that are going great for God, and guess what? Weeds are starting to sprout up. We're starting to sprout up, and we get lazy, and we don't want to pull those weeds. What I mean is we don't go to God and ask for forgiveness again. We don't go to God and ask for a sanctification. We don't go to God and ask Him for the Holy Spirit anymore. We get lazy in our worship. We get lazy in our reading of the Bible because weeds keep popping up. Weeds keep popping up. And instead of giving them to God, instead of pulling them out, you know what we do? We allow them to keep going and keep going. And you know what happened? Even the nicest flower, the nicest tree, the nicest plant, with the right amount of weeds, will die. Right. Church, we got to pull the weeds. Now, you don't ever have a party and say, hey, we're all going to go pull weeds. And everybody shows up and they're like, yeah. Pulling weeds is hard work. <coughs> Pulling weeds, listen, in my life I've come to realize this. When everything's going good, it's when the weeds start poking up. 
you know what? There's times in my life that I let the weeds poke up and poke up and poke up and they keep growing and keep growing. You know what starts happening to me? I start becoming a weed instead of the flowers that God has called me to be. I start getting the weed aspect of life. You know what a weed is? A weed is not useful for anything. Amen. It's junk. Amen. You know what? A lot of this worldly stuff is not useful for anything. Somebody says they have a problem with alcohol. You know what's so bad about it? Alcohol will do nothing for you, but slowly, slowly, slowly take your life. Some people have drugs, an issue with drugs. You know what drugs do? Slowly, slowly, slowly take over your life. Well, Bobby, those are hard. You know what gossip is to do? Slowly, slowly, slowly. You know what small thinking does? Slowly, slowly, slowly takes over your life. You know what? If we don't get rid of the weeds now, then guess what? Our life will be consumed with weeds. Church, I don't know about you. I love the song. Go ahead and get ready. Amen. It is well with my soul. I love that song because, listen, it really marks this song to me. Church, if we do not keep working in the harvest We'll never have a harvest to work. We'll never have a harvest to work. It'll always mess up. You see, church, one of the most difficult part of gardening is having to keep up with the weeds because it, it is a never-ending job. This morning, I want us to look into our lives and ask ourselves, am I working on the harvest? Do I have the right soul that is built on the foundation of God? Am I following the light of the Word to show me how to grow? Am I allowing the Holy Spirit to flood me to help my seed grow in life? Or am I allowing the weeds to take away my life? I told you at the beginning of the service I'm a worrier. Friday night we were out eating with a bunch of, bunch of pastors, man. That was cool, man. I was excited about that. And we were eating with them and, 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 and you know, I I try not to brag because I'll be like, Jesus is doing great things at Restoration Chapel. They're wrecking up our church. We're, we're uh, seeing people get saved. We're seeing people get baptized. We're seeing people get joined to church. And I was just telling them all that. And, and as I began to do that, my phone buzzed. And I was wondering why my phone was buzzing. As I looked down at my phone, it was, a, it was from Twitter. If you don't know what Twitter is, we'll talk about it later. It was from Twitter. And Twitter told me what was going on in Paris. And, as I began to read that, I began to stop talking about what God was doing and start focusing on what's going on in the world. And as I got home, me and my wife got home, man, I was, I was still uh, in that mid-range of excitement, but mid-range of, of what's going on. And I turned on the news, and, and I'll never forget, my wife looked at me and she said, why are we watching this? I got to go to bed. And I couldn't go to bed. I, I, I stayed up all night long. I even made myself sick thinking about what was going on. I began praying for people, and I began, I began saying, God, why? Why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Yesterday, I worried about it all day long. We were out shopping. I went shopping yesterday instead of going to watch the football game, and I stayed on Twitter looking about what was going on. And last night, my wife, she's like, man, you just, you seem out of it. What's going on? And I said, nothing, nothing, nothing. Well, this morning, I woke up, and God said, listen, let the weeds consume your life and you forgot that I am the overcomer so pull the weeds out and begin to realize that I still got greater things in store as I begin to pray this morning begin to ask God listen it was hard for me to realize and, 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 and I don't know about you but it gets hard for me to pull out the weeds because most of the time when I pull out the weeds I pull it out myself
about the sin being nailed to the cross. You know what that means? When it's nailed to the cross, it's gone because the cross was a place of death. You see, Jesus died on the cross, but when he came off the cross, he rose again. But when we nail it to the cross, you know what we're doing when we nail it to the cross? We're putting it to death. We're saying, listen, this don't own me no more. This has no control of me no more. This has no issue of me no more.